And hey, welcome into the Lincoln Playbook. It's the final regular season edition of this football show. Gerhard Mathagani joined in by the head coach of the Lincoln Golden Bears, Brad Wallace. And coach, we always hate talking about losses on this show, but you ended the season with another loss to uh, Childersburg, 38-27. Talk about the way that game played out. Well, I mean, it, it, we started out, I mean, you can say it was slow. You can say right. what, what, however you want to take it. Uh, we, we just didn't start out smooth like we should have. Mm -hmm. And uh, about the middle of the second quarter, we started – Started playing a little bit better ball, and um, we kind of carried over into the third quarter and then got flat again. Right. That's that's pretty much the tale of four quarters, honest. Right. But we've got we've got a bunch of injuries that we're we're having to work through right mm -hmm. now, and uh, and I understand that, that things aren't going to be perfect, but you want them as a head coach, right? And you want things to be running right. Um, didn't play we didn't play as well as I thought we should have on the offensive line this week. I think our guys are a little frustrated after watching tape today, trying to get ready for this next week. We showed them all all of the tape, and and they're a little frustrated with themselves. So right. maybe we can we can pick our tempo up a little bit more this week. One of the biggest things, especially here towards the end of the season, that you've had to deal with is a lot of injuries and, and injuries to guys that play a lot both sides of the football. Talking about the balancing act of being able to you know get these guys in, get them healthy, and get some other fresh guys on the field. Well, I mean, and and the thing about it is, our fresh guys are young guys. Uh, we when, we, when we've thrown guys out, we're in, we're talking about tenth graders, mm -hmm. we're talking about ninth graders right. that are stepping in on backup roles right now, and they're having to they're having to take reins of a varsity football game when they just came out of their JV season. Right. But uh, they're helping us out a little bit, and I mean, we're and you can't get too frustrated with them, but you're having to coach them all the way through it, and you're having to make sure that they understand what they're supposed to be doing. But um, we're getting better as as far as our backup wise, but we just. Yeah, we've just got to get over that edge. Right. We've, got, we've got to start games out better than what we did. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be peaking at this point of the year. Do you see parts of you know the young guys getting some playing time and some of the veteran guys really playing well? Can you see that kind of marrying itself well? And then you'd be peaking, but just in a different light. Well, I, I see it I see it more as, as depth-wise we're getting better. Right. But the the problem that that I've seen right now is we're going into the first round of the playoffs and all eleven guys hadn't played together right. in a couple of weeks. Right. And that's the thing that scares me about this first round. But I mean, and and we showed it to them today on the on the film, of course, and and they've got to they've got to make a change in, mm -hmm. in the way they they start ball games. We we try to start ball games fast. We try to we try to get on top of people right at the beginning. So that way we've got momentum as we go through the ball game, and we hadn't done that in the last few weeks. Right. You never want injuries on your football team, but I would figure if, as a coach, whenever you, if you could place them anywhere, it'd be this point of the season after you clinch the region championship and as you head into the playoffs, getting some other guys in the ball game. Well, luckily that that was a good thing for us. I mean, it, we've, we'd already clinched the region championship, but the bad thing is our one of our team goals was we wanted to finish up 8-2. Right, two. right. And, and that kind of – that kind of kind of stuck a sour note on us toward the last two ball games, but uh, we we're battling. I mean, or at least I mean I still see a lot of fight in our kids, and our, and I still see our kids battling every day on the practice field. We just got to, We've got to get ourselves in a better predicament. Back going back to last week, Mason McLean, one of your star senior kickers, invited to play in a big time game. Talk about just that that aspect for him. Um, he's, I mean, he's a, anytime one of our kids gets an opportunity to go and play in one of these games and represent us, that's, that's a great thing for the school, the community, and our football team. But uh, Mason's got a great opportunity to go play in this All-American game, and he gets, he gets to do this um, and represent our school. It's the Blue-Gray All-American game being played January 10th next year. Some feature some of the best high school players in all of the country. Mason will play with them next year. I've always worked hard for it, you know, just so I could always – my biggest goal is to play college football and be an All-American. And just being able to finally see that my hard work has paid off is just – it's just – it's amazing to me. Is it part of his goal is to be an All-American and play in college? You think he's got that ability, don't you? I, I think he's got the leg. I really do. Uh, he's, he's knocking them out of the back of the end zone, it seems like, every time on kickoff. Uh, he's got a strong leg on field goals. We, you know, last week he, he's – Frustrated right, right now, but right. he's going to get better. And 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 the the work ethic on this kid. I mean, it seems like every day I turn into the into the drive of the school, mm -hmm. he's out there kicking. Right. So I mean, 
He's one of those that's, that's uh, self-driven and, right. and will make sure that he gets everything corrected. Absolutely. He's a hardworking guy. We have a, hard, a lot of hardworking sponsors that make this show available and ready for you. One of them is Luxury Auto Parts, actually owned by Mason McLean's father, Lee McLean. Go visit him at LuxuryAutoParts.com or InsuranceDirectAutos.com. You can also give him a call at 205-763-1084, 888 888- 589 P-A-R-T-S. Go visit them out in Lincoln. Tell them we sent you here right here on the Lincoln Playbook. We're back with more of the Lincoln Playbook after the break. We're back with the Lincoln Playbook. The Lincoln Golden Bears visiting Childersburg for the final game of the regular season. Coach, talk about some of the things you wanted to see from your ball game, from your ball team early on in this game. Well, I wanted to just come out fast and I wanted to just come out hard and, and, and set the tone of the football game, but we we kind of we kind of relaxed at the beginning, and, and it it was kind of it was really frustrating. I mean, we had a bunch of penalties called on us at the beginning of the game, and a lot of them a lot of them were majorly legit. We've got some things that we need to clean up during practice this week. Right. We talked about you know not having big plays, and it seemed like a lot of the little stuff wasn't working, but those those big plays were the ones that were kind of killer. That was it. I mean, we'd get ourselves in a in a in a long situation, our third and long situation, and it seemed like they would break break a play loose. We. We always preach third down, get off the field, get off right. the field, and, and we, 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 let, we let up a little bit on our third downs this week. And it also seemed like when they were on, on defense, they wanted to stop your run, and you also wanted to stop their run. Did a pretty good job there. Yes, sir. I mean, our, our guys, I mean, the, we, we had some spurts where we were looking very, very good, and then we had some spurts where we looked like, we didn't look like the same Lincoln team that's been playing all year long. Right. But uh, that's, that's the thing that we've got to do is we've got to get, we've got to get some consistency with our play. And, and make sure that we're doing the right things on every play. That touchdown made it 12-0 early on, and you hate to see those defense touchdowns. You've created a few here lately, so I mean, you have to have some positivity about that defense as you head into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I mean, our defense has gotten a lot better throughout the year, and, and you can see it each, each week. I mean, we've we scored points in the last four ball games, and I mean, that's that's major when you come when you start looking at defensive stats. Our defense has scored at least seven points in every ball game for the last last four weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Right, and then there's another big play, and like I said, like I said, it's kind of a tale of two quarters because they you know they get up 18 nothing, and then you outscore them by 20 points later on. Yeah, we get we get in a hot streak toward the middle of the second quarter, and uh, our guys start rallying back around trying to trying to get some things to go. And Runye Bell actually had a very good ball game during this game, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of picked up some slack from, from not having Mario. And uh, but he's 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 come on strong in the last couple of weeks, and he's he's actually doing a really good job for us. He's had actually haven't had a lot of more carries because Jamario Howard's been out, and he's done a pretty good job, like you said. Well, he's he's had to get used to, had to get used to conditioning too, because right. I mean he hadn't started, he's never started a ball game, right? right? And he's been one of the guys that just go in and rest Mario mm-hmm. during the game, and now he's having to start the game. He's having to go on both sides of the ball, and he's having to uh, having to get his lung capacity up to where he can do that. You also talked about guys like Danny Bradford and also uh, J- uh, J- Knight as well, being able to get in, get some plays, get some big defensive plays as well. Yeah, I mean our, our guys are our guys are getting spread around a little bit right now, and I mean they're getting they're having to make plays up for for some guys that are injured right now. Zay does a good job on this run. Uh, if you see the wide copy of it, it's it's amazing what he does, but. Uh, it's hurt a little bit right here at the end. He's he's been banged up for the last few weeks. I mean, it's just it seems like you turn around and one of them's one of them's either grimacing or crying right, right now. <laughs> and but you talked about you spoke about this team battling. It looked like that's exactly what happened. And you know, Childersburg obviously came out there really high at the beginning, but at the same time, you guys battled and battled, and, and Zay was able to get there for that touchdown at the end. Well, I ch- I challenged them at halftime and during during this ball game, and and I said I said guys, we're not playing the best we we that I know you can play. And um, I said, we got to take a little pride in what we do. Mm-hmm. We got to start being. We got to get take a little bit of that golden bear. And I mean, I just kind of brought them back. I'm like, guys, we're taking step back, uh, step back instead of steps forward. Right. And right now, we need to be taking steps forward and getting ready for these playoffs. Absolutely. And do you, at any point, as a coach, maybe not to the team, but as a coach, think, hey, we can use this to see the way we would handle. A playoff situation where we may be down at all, or is it just let's just focus on this game for you? Well, it's just focus on this game for me. I'm, yeah. try, I'm trying each week to win every ball game that we play, and I, that's mm-hmm. what I tell our kids. I said, "You're going to get a great effort out of me every right. week, and I'm going to give you everything I've got." Right. But I need I need to on both sides, and 
And uh, we're, we're working. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a little frustrating. We had a major success right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we backed off. I don't know if we've, if we've taken steps back. But I think, I think this week we'll, we'll tell the tale whether we can, we can regroup and get all our, our guys back on the field and see what we can do. What, if any, adjustments were needed to be made, or was it basically let's just clean up what we do? Well, it's major, majorly it's clean up what we do. I mean, we 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 were getting knocked around on the on the offensive line, mm -hmm. defensively, we we weren't we weren't playing assignment football, and and there's there's and that's basically what we kept preaching at halftime is we've got to clean this thing up. Right. We've got to start playing like I know you're capable of, and and let's go let's go finish this second half and let's get out there and let's battle back into this ball game. Absolutely. Also, a final question about, you know, about these kind of games. Obviously, it means nothing as far as, you know, playoffs go because you already clinched your spot. And it means nothing for them as far as playoffs go because they've already clinched their spot as well. Talk about the inter-county rivalry part of it. That's that battle part of it. Or does that any of that exist? I know Lincoln Mumford is the big one. Is that any, any well, of that Well, I mean, anytime you play a school in the county, somebody on our team has relatives at the other school. Right. I mean, you're, you're always going to have that. And I think we had about six or seven kids that had relatives at, at Childersburg. And, uh, but it, it's... It's still a rival. It's still something that we want to do. And I mean, I talked to Coach Fawcett at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. I think the last time that they played, it was seven to six mm -hmm. was the was the final score, and Lincoln right. came out successful. And some of those kids still had a burning desire to go out and beat Lincoln. Absolutely. So, I mean, it, it was one of those deals. They were ready to come out and play us. For sure, the Lincoln band, like you said, the football team has been out there. Well, it's been a while since those two teams matched up. Band was the same way. Here's their performance from Childersburg Friday night. Back with the Lincoln Playbook, coach down 18 to seven in the second or second half. Talk about some of the things you wanted to see out of your offense. You get a big touchdown here to start out the game. Well, I wanted to see us come out with a spark and, and at least start getting something, some kind of fire started in this second half. And, and our kids battled back in the second half. I mean, we we came up with with 14 unanswered points right at the beginning of the game. And, with seven minutes left to go in the third quarter, I was really thinking that we were we were right where we needed to be at, and our kids were fixing. The, do what they're capable of doing in the second half. And, and uh, we, we made some great plays. Runye Bell had another play right here with the interception. Carries it in for the touchdown. That gets us up 21 to 18. And I mean, we've got all the momentum going our way and we need to finish this second half out like we're supposed to. You mentioned in the first half just how big he's been. And just talk about some of the ways he has stepped up because you saw an offensive touchdown followed up by a defensive touchdown back to back. I mean, he's all around the field, and, and the one thing that when you meet that kid, he's got so much energy. I mean, and, and, and he's, he's excited about playing this game. He really wants to go off and play at the next level, and, and we're still working on that. And he's got some offers that are, that are sitting there waiting on him, uh, just, just waiting, to, waiting for it to happen. That was a big play that we just saw. It got a touchback there, and uh, you know, talk about that the way it kind of swung momentum. Justin Knight did a, a fantastic job running down the field and caught up with the kid and, and actually punched the ball from the back and, right. and knocked the ball out of bounds and going through the end zone. Mm -hmm. So he gave us a touchback, and kept points off the board. That was one of our phenomenal efforts in this ball game, and 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 he's come on really, really strong because he's having to play both sides of the ball now. He's having to carry the load a little bit that Mario and and Runye are. Or have been doing all year long. Right, and then here's a big time pass uh, that they completed. This is some of the things you, I'm guessing you're gonna have to work on. We'll talk a lot more about Boaz, but that pass defense trying to make, make sure guys are in their spots. Yeah, we're gonna, be, we're gonna have to do some things a little bit different this week. And, and, and one thing is we're gonna have to get our pass coverages a lot better. And uh, that's, that is one thing that we've talked about in our staff meeting today, uh, how we're gonna handle this week's practice and what we're gonna do to get, get that accomplished. So. That's what our main goal is, is try to get us get us ready for this Boaz team this week. And then this touchdown here uh, makes it 20, uh, 38 to 21, and th those have to be really, really frustrating to watch. They are, they really are, because it's big plays, and and, and I'm not one of those guys that, that likes to sit and watch big plays happen to our, to our football team, because that's not the way it's supposed to be, and we have really hadn't had that major problem all year long, and, and we had it in this ball game. And there's a big touchdown there to end off the game. 
38-27, your final score. When you when you break this game down, is it more? Let's just let's forget about this and let's focus on the playoffs. Or do you or do you take a lot from this ball game? Well, I took a lot from this one. We we had a we had a probably a two and a half hour film session with our kids on on just this one ball game. This is the most this is the longest I've ever kept the kids in it. In the, in the film room and, and, and making sure that they see everything and, and making sure that we understand that, hey, we've got to get better in these spots. And, and, and for us to survive in these playoffs, I mean, you're only guaranteed one game each week. And, and I told the guys, I said, I said, I know that early morning, Saturday morning ride back mm -hmm. to Montgomery is hard, but I sure would like to be on it on the Saturday morning after this ball game. Absolutely. When you looked at the film, of the Childersburg game. You talked about Renye Bell's big game. Were there any other guys, maybe some unsung heroes from um, last week? Justin Knight had a really, really good ball game, both offense and defensively. He's he's still learning our offense a little bit at tailback. I mean, he's one of those guys that we we we, we tried to put in at the back in the backfield, mm -hmm. and he's doing a great job for us right now. And 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 the thing about him is he's he's not complaining. He's asking questions. He's doing his job, and and that's what we want out of our kids. Absolutely. An, an update you don't have to tell us very super specifically on uh, on Zay Caldwell. Obviously, you know he got injured there that after that first touchdown. He's he's been a battle. He's been a fighter really ever since. You know it, his back started giving him some issues there. Um, he's he's he's. I actually talked to him today and he said, "I right, coach, I'm 100. percent Don't worry yeah. about it." So I mean, he's one of those guys that even if it is hurt, he's going to try to battle through it. And uh, he's a tough kid and. And, but I, I'm, I'm excited about seeing where he's going to be at this week. This is going to be one of those ball games where he's going to have to play a little bit both ways and help us out at, at uh, corner. And uh, but I'm real excited about this ball game. I mean, I think it's going to be a, a come out ball game for us, and and hopefully we can get back up on the ladder. Absolutely. Coming up next, right here on the bull on the uh, Lincoln Playbook, we talk a lot more about Boaz. Talk a lot more about Week 11 of the season. We always talk about these times of years whenever. Lincoln gets in the playoffs, he got in the playoffs last year. We'll dive into that as well. Lots of great sponsors here on the Lincoln Playbook. We talked about one of them earlier. Let's talk about another one right now. It's the Lincoln Booster Club. Any prospective member, welcome to attend their weekly meetings. They meet every Monday at 6.30 p.m. at Rick's Crossroads Cafe on the corner of Highway 77 and 78 up on the hill. Once again, if you want to join the Lincoln Booster Club, you join them every Monday, 6.30, Rick's Crossroads Cafe. We thank you for your support of the Lincoln Golden Bear program and this show. Back with more of The Playbook after the break. Welcome back to the Lincoln Playbook. The record is now 0-0 zero and zero as Coach, you head into the Alabama High School State Association playoffs. First off, just the playoffs in general. Everything, you know, is all from here on out is, you know, winning your, moving on, losing, you go home. Just talk about just the way you want to approach the playoffs. Well, and and that's the first thing that came come out of my mouth after we got through with film today. As I turned around, I said, "Guess what? We get to hit the reset button." Right. And it's zero zero right. on the record. Uh, we we play one game a week. We're worried about that one team, mm -hmm. and we're not worried about what's in what's in the future. We got to take care of ourselves and take care of what we can control. What we can control during the week. And, right. And hopefully we can we can get everything taken care of this week and and go out there and put a great showing on the first round. And that's that's what I want our kids to do. And I really want I really want us to have a a, a, a great showing on our mm -hmm. first round of the playoffs. What I always talk about whenever whenever we talk about playoffs to other people is in in college uh, uh, two losses three losses you're out you're 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 done in the NFL and in high school it's completely different because you know you can come in red hot lose that first round because you're thinking about something else you can come in sluggish and come in and, and just explode in the playoffs talk about. Just that aspect of it, being able just to find that right spot between there. Well, uh, the main thing, I mean, I even told last year when we went, we were four and six mm -hmm. going into the going into the uh, first round of the playoffs, I told our kids, I said, I said, I don't know if you remember, well, y'all y'all were weren't even born. Right. I started laughing <laughs> then, and and I said, in '94, Aniston took a took a team that was four and six right. and won the state championship right. that year, and uh, so I, I mean. Cinderella teams are out there. Mm -hmm. Be a part of it. Right. Try to make it happen. Right. And and I'm, we've got enough talent in our in our locker room that we should be able to do whatever we want to do. It's just we've got to put our mind to it and we've got to do the right things during the week to get ourselves in the predicament for Friday. 
Your first round opponent is Boaz, who saw it on the screen just a moment ago. Talk about what you know of this of this football team, kind of what they do and what you expect to see on Friday night. Um, Boaz is, I mean, Coach Whaley does a great job with them, of course. And 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 the first thing that you that you see when you pop the tape on is you're sitting there and you're they're five they're four and five wide, right. and they spread the field out and and you're having to play pass coverage on them the whole time. Well, the last couple of weeks he's he's kind of throwing a wrinkle in on you right. because now they're they're running the ball a lot more. So now we've got to we've got to set ourselves up to where we can we can defend the run and also stay back have enough people back for the pass that they do. They've got a phenomenal quarterback that can that can put the ball on the money. Everything's timing routes. Everything's very sharp and crisp. And uh, we've got to we've got to stay on top of them the whole ball game. Last year you went to the playoffs as you said against played against J O Johnson. You went on the road. You're able to to get all that experience with your kids. Talk about the way that experience from last year helps this year, or does it at all? Uh, well, uh, the main thing is, I mean, we had to tell two halves in that ball game. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we came in and it's I think it was eight to seven. Right. And our, yeah, eight to seven, and we're winning the ball game, and and we come out the second half and we get flat. Mm -hmm. Well, the main thing that we we've got to preach to our kids is we've got to have a four quarter affair this right. week. It, it can't be like the last couple of weeks. We have a quarter that we're hot, a quarter that we're cold, a half a quarter that we're doing what we're supposed to do. Uh, we've got to play four complete quarters and do our jobs for four quarters, and you and you'll come out successful. Right. And and that's that's the main thing that we're preaching for these these guys this week. One of the things, kind of the nuanced things, the smaller things that a lot of people and fans don't know is just the way the playoffs work. And and one of the things that becomes a part of the playoffs is the travel to Montgomery. Every team that makes the playoffs, you got to go to Montgomery and exchange tape and do all of the uh, the paperwork there at the state capitol. You know, talk about that aspect of it. Well, you go down, you, uh, mainly you, you get up and you take a little ride every morning, <laughs> every Saturday morning. I, I told the kids, I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not excited about the right, ride, but right. I, I want to go do the ride again sure, this week. But sure. uh, we usually get there. This week it was to the 10:30 meeting, and I uh, think we got out around 12:15. And basically, they you go in and you, you set up set up your contracts and and how things are going to go and when when what time the games are going to be played and that mm -hmm. type thing. And and plus you're getting your credentials for the for, for the game, what can be shown with the game and that type stuff. Right. So, but it's 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 a very informative meeting, and it takes a little bit of time, but it's well worth be, being in the first round of the playoffs. When you do all the preparations, team preparations for the game, will anything change because it's the playoffs, or or you, do you keep basically the same routine? Well, the 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 thing that changes when with me during the playoffs is, and I don't know if a lot of coaches do it or not. All year long, I've I've been we've been grinding, we've been banging, we've been we've been I mean it's major contact. We've, we've had con major conditioning at the end. Well, what you've done off season is you built yourself up to get ready for the playoffs. Right. So this week, I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm going to back off of them, right. but I, I, I'll take some things out of it. Some of the full contact, getting a kid hurt or something like that, we'll, we'll kind of back off of that a little bit. But uh, we'll still be up, upbeat, up tempo in practice. Everything will be just as just as fast as normal. There just won't be as much beating and banging, a lot of big bump type stuff. Wrap up, do your job, and blow the we'll blow the whistles quick and get you out of there. Absolutely, Coach. Best of luck in the AHSAA state playoffs. Lincoln Golden Bears play at home Friday night, 7 p.m. Head over to Keith Howard Memorial Stadium. Go check out the Lincoln Golden Bears as they face Boas in the first round. Hopefully, again, we'll be in the second round as well, making that trip to Montgomery. Back with more next week here on the Lincoln Playbook. Thanks for joining us.